Hey, welcome to Craft Central Designs. Today, I have for you a beautiful grapevine autumn wreath in gorgeous fall color tones with a beautiful sunflower adorned with a wood plaque with a stenciled pumpkin. I love this one. I think I may keep this one for myself. Welcome back to my subscribers and to all visiting my channel today. You have entered my happy place where I love crafting and creativity and sharing what I create with all of you. If you like what you see on my channel, please consider subscribing, give my tutorial a thumbs up and leave your comments. Okay, let's get busy making this beautiful autumn wreath. Let's look at the materials that we will need to create this wreath. I purchased this grapevine wreath on Amazon. Um, I will put it in the description box, the Amazon store I purchased it from. It's a 14 inch uh, grapevine wreath. It's one of the um, more narrow grapevine wreaths as opposed to the heavier, thicker ones. I prefer the, the uh, thinner grapevine wreath myself. Uh, here I have two ribbons that I'm going to use to make a gorgeous bow for this wreath. This is the one that I used on a previous project, that beautiful uh, rusty orange color. That one's from Hobby Lobby. The one underneath it, the Buffalo Check, also from Hobby Lobby, a gorgeous ribbon. Uh, that burlap ribbon, the narrow one, I ended up not using that one. And possibly I may be using that twisted um, braid cord. That is so pretty. And here we have these beautiful florals. And this is going to be the, the color scheme of this wreath. I absolutely love this color. I have two small hydrangeas and that gorgeous sunflower. I'm not going to be using that white sunflower. I have some pine cones there. I'm going to be placing one of those um, twig pumpkins on the wreath. I absolutely love these, and especially on a grapevine wreath. I have these two little pumpkins that I got at Dollar Tree. I ended up not really having room for those on this piece. And I purchased these florals uh, at Hobby Lobby. I ended up not using that. I did use these. I'm really not sure what these are called. I keep wanting to refer to them as cattails. I don't know why that keeps popping into my head, but anyway, they're gorgeous on this wreath. And those beautiful um, earthy tone uh, leaves, gorgeous on this wreath. And here we have two different kinds of those, let's just call them cattails. <laughs> See the one on the left? It's very fluffy and gorgeous. I ended up using those on the wreath. Um, I'm just showing you all kinds of possibilities for an autumn wreath there. Those are those pomegranate um, pods or seeds, whatever you call them. I did use the, some of those leaves. And these are all florals uh, from Hobby Lobby. They have exquisite florals for uh, autumn uh, decorating, for crafting, for uh, any kind of floral uh, wreaths or decorated pumpkins, whatever. Hobby Lobby has the most uh, beautiful florals. I purchased this um, wood plaque. It's got that live edge look to it. Um, and I'm going to use this on the wreath. Now, you can use a sign or not use a sign. That's totally up to you. I'm going to show you what it looks like with and without. That welcome uh, fall letters there, I think I got that as well at a Dollar Tree. I have some glue sticks there, uh, scissors, wire cutters, and of course, my Gorilla high glue gun. 
I ended up doing something different with that sign and I'm going to show you that right here. I started with my sign. Now, I ordered some autumn stencils on Amazon and I absolutely love them. And I put them on the in the description box, the Amazon store where I purchased them. As well, I purchased those letters which are my favorite uh, letters. You can use that welcome fall sign as well. Either or. You choose. Um, you don't even have to have a sign. That's up to you. Um, I am going to use the sign, but I think this wreath is beautiful with or without. Um, but I wanted to use this little pumpkin stencil, which is just love it. It's so cute. Um, and I wanted to make the O in home uh, a pumpkin. So I use this little tiny baby uh, spouncer or or dab dauber or dabber, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just going to use some Waverly pumpkin uh, chalk paint. And I just very lightly dab um, that pumpkin Waverly chalk paint on the stencil on the pumpkin part of that stencil. Now the stem I'm going to do with antiquing wax. So I'm being very careful here to just stay within the, the lines of that stencil. I don't want a heavy uh, paint line or a solid uh, paint on this piece. I'm just dabbing on the paint to keep it nice and soft and subtle. I love stenciling. I have a huge, huge stack of stencils. I'm sure you're going to be seeing me uh, using stencils in the future, especially with Christmas projects. But I just absolutely love uh, stencils and how you can create uh, some really awesome uh, features to a project by just dabbing on paint through a stencil. I just love that. Now those letters, um, I don't know if I mentioned, if I just mentioned that I got those on Amazon, I'll put those as well in the description box. Now I'm going to use that um, antiquing wax, but I'm going to be using a paintbrush because I need to have a lot of control over where that antiquing wax goes because I'm just filling in this little stem. Now, this pumpkin um, is an actuality from top to bottom. The entire stencil is the same height as those letters. So I decided to do something fun and put that pumpkin in there to serve as the O. There's a little curly stem on this pumpkin and then a little chunky stem as well. And that's what you see me filling in right there. And again, I just dab my paint on. That's the look I like when I stencil. On that wood piece, there was a little natural um, spot in the center of the wood. You're going to be able to see that on the pumpkin, but I'm okay with that. I still think it's going to look awesome. Now I noticed um, on my pumpkin, there was this little tiny corner of the pumpkin that I did not catch with my um, my dauber or dabber or spouncer, <laughs> whatever we're calling it. So I washed my brush out and I'm just going to take some pumpkin and just fill in that little spot. And that's what I'm doing right there. Being very careful to be precise where I place that paint. And I'm also going around the entire pumpkin, just filling in any areas that need be. Notice when I dip my paintbrush in the paint, I dab it off on the paper plate. Because again, I don't want a heavy paint um, or solid paint on this pumpkin. I prefer more of a, just a subtle kind of a, 
a more vague um, paint application. Just cleaning up the lines a little bit there. I love this sign. I think it's so cute. And I thought the wood with the sort of live edge look uh, really kind of went with that gray fine wreath. So I have to finish putting my letters on. See how it's the same height? And here's that stencil. The package of stencils came with a, a lot of different uh, pumpkins and fall acorns and all kinds of things. Oh, it's fantastic. Again, I'll put that in the description box. So I just peel off my letters and I finished placing them on the sign. Now you could take, uh, after the, everything dries, you could take, um, I put a layer of Mod Podge over that just to seal everything down. I love it. Okay. It's bow time. This ribbon is crazy beautiful. I don't even know what to say about it. It's so pretty. So I'm going to make a bow. Uh, this is going to be a gorgeous addition to this wreath. I'm making the base right now. I'm using that kind of rusty orange color. It's probably one of the most beautiful ribbons that Hobby Lobby came out with this year. Possibly it was there last year. I just know I really have taken note of it this year. So I'm doing the base bow, three loops on each side. This is a 1.5 inch wired ribbon. And I just placed my pipe cleaner to secure all of those loops. I would say those loops are, I want to say, uh, 10 inches and the tails about 10 inches. So the loops take up about 10 inches of ribbon each loop. Three loops on each side. I'm going to angle my tails and this is going to serve as the base of that bow. So pretty. Now that buffalo check ribbon is going to go on top. That's going to be tier number two. This is a wired ribbon, but it's a very soft ribbon. I was thinking it was going to be a little stiffer. It almost looked burlap-y uh, through the cellophane wrapping, but it, in actuality, it's a very soft ribbon. Very, very beautiful ribbon, gorgeous color. Couldn't be more perfect to go with those beautiful um, rusty orange uh, flowers, the sunflowers and the hydrangea. So I'm creating these loops for this um, tier of the bow, a little bit smaller. I want to say eight inches. Four loops, two loops on each side. And I'm going to do a single loop on each side. That's gonna rest right on top of those two bigger loops. I make that loop just a little bit smaller. I wanna say maybe six to seven inches on those loops. I eyeball everything. I never measure anything out, um, but I'm just giving you those uh, measurements just in case you're feel more comfortable uh, having a measurement to go by. Now I have my single loop resting on my double loops on each side. I'm going to put a pipe cleaner around there. I always try and um, match my pipe cleaner up to the color scheme of the uh, ribbon I'm using. Now I'm going to create a loop right down the center. And I often call this the button. I take my pipe cleaner from around the back, pull it through and secure that in the back. And okay, of course I have to say it, I have bow tutorials. 
I'm going to list those in the description box. I think my dog just barked. Um, I'm going to list those in the description box on um, my bow tutorials. If you want to learn how to make bows like I do, I have very slow, methodical, detailed tutorials. And I can teach you how to make these bows if you uh, just take a look at those tutorials. And you'll be very happy when you learn how to make bows like this. They're absolutely gorgeous and it's such a wonderful skill to have. I'm going to be cutting those pipe cleaners off of the back of there because I want my, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to wrap those pipe cleaners around. That's what I ended up doing. I'm sorry about that. Um, I didn't cut them off because I ended up wrapping them around the back and securing both of those uh, bows together. And that sticker that you just saw me peel off there, you're going to see that sticker again in just a short while. I'll let you know what that, you'll know what I'm talking about when we get there. Um, I was thinking I was going to hang this sign from the top of the wreath, but then I ended up not doing that. Um, it's, it's always kind of a hesitation whether to do that because it kind of flips around on the wreath when you have it on the door. So I ended up not doing that and I chose another method to put the sign on. This is kind of an oval wreath as opposed to a completely round wreath. So I have that wreath sitting as I want to apply my florals With that oval shape, I'm keeping that in mind. And this will determine where I put my uh, florals. Now, the great thing about a grapevine wreath is that you can stick your florals right in the grapevine wreath. I always lay everything out to get a good idea, especially my largest elements on the wreath. After I stick them in and I decide exactly where I want them, I do hot glue them. And now that uh, twig pumpkin there, oh, it was a kind of a pain in the neck <laughs> to keep it on, but I really wanted it on there. I placed it around six o'clock on that oval wreath. So I used Aileen's uh, tacky glue. And you can see I have a clip there. I clipped it right to the wreath. And it still gave me a bit of a hard time. I had to end up putting tape around it. So here was my remedy uh, to placing that sign on. I tell you, where there's a will, there's a way. I got those bamboo skewers um, at Dollar Tree. I had them in my stash. And I decided if I put one or two of those on the back of that sign, I could actually skewer, skewer, that's a hard word to say, that sign right through the grapevine wreath. Now, how creative is that? I don't think I've ever done anything like that before. But you'll see how I do it. I'm going to um, use some tacky glue on one end along with some hot glue. And then I decided to put two of those skewers. Glue them on. I'm just going to let those dry. And this is like the perfect solution to stick this in the wreath. There's my little tape remedy. I actually had to tape that pumpkin down with masking tape. Okay, so now I'm starting to apply uh, my next largest elements, which are my beautiful um, earthy colored maple leaves. They are so pretty. Now I framed out my sunflower and my, and my two hydrangeas I placed my leaves on there to see exactly where I wanted to place them, and then I ended up gluing them down. Next, I'm going to be putting in those, I'm not sure, are we calling them cattails? Let's just call them that. And I'm going to start placing those around the wreath. I did put my bow on because um, normally I put my bow on one of the first things, but I wanted to get those large element of florals on there first. Um, but when you're doing a wreath, it's a good idea if you have a very uh, big, beautiful bow 
uh, you're going to be placing your florals around that bow. So you're going to go and have to, you're going to, oh my goodness, let me say that again. <laughs> you're going to have to uh, place your bow on there. And here is the little culprit that barked. Oh my goodness, look at the sticker. She has it stuck to her fur. <laughs> it is so funny. She lays under my craft table and she gets all kinds of remnants stuck to her. And she's also the uh, little little dog that I have. She's not such a little dog, but she uh, tends to like to slurp her water while I'm doing my voiceovers. So you probably heard this happen before. It's so funny. Okay, <laughs> back to the wreaths. Um, I stuck in my cattails both colors around the wreath once i was happy with the pl with the placement of those you can see where i place them there where you place your florals is going to be up to you that's something that you're going to have to get comfortable with i'm just telling you start with your largest elements then your next largest then your filler elements and for me that was the the cattails now i wanted to make a point um, I had spoken about this in a previous video when I was instructing you on floral design. You can take uh, elements and place them on your wreath that don't necessarily have a stem. Let your elements that are already on the wreath support smaller elements. I just put a little dab of glue on leaves. I stick them in here and there. And I just let the elements that are already on there just support those smaller elements. Did that make sense? <laughs> because you don't have to have a stem on something in order to insert it into a wreath. Uh, you'll find at the end, it's a, a wonderful thing to be able to take those little tiny elements and just place them around. And I'm going to take the sign off and show you what it looks like without the sign. That's up to you. Or maybe you have another sign that you would like to use on a wreath. I'm just here for inspiration, to give you ideas. Now I'm showing you this as a preview. I have several um, pieces of the autumn decor that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm going to transform these next, um, next video. That's gonna be one project there with those two block leaves. Wait till you see what I'm gonna do with that. I'm going to transform that sign. I'm going to take that, um, possibly take those, those little rolling pins. Those are so cute. I have to say, I really love those. They're almost cute enough on their own. But this sign isn't. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something with that. And I'm going to transform that as well. So I'm going to show you how I take some Dollar Tree items and really give them a a beautiful facelift, if you will. And here we have that final look at this autumn wreath. I hope you feel inspired to make an autumn wreath for your home or perhaps for someone else's home for a gift. Please remember to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and leave your comments. Next up, three Dollar Tree autumn decor makeovers. Okay, until next time. You all take care.